Three years ago, a global plant virus was recorded, which destroyed most parts of the ecosystems. All the top scientists on Earth have been working to find a way to stop this virus, but no solution has been found yet. The latest research now shows that people who consume food infested with the virus will suffer great autoimmune diseases. The loss of plant life has caused oxygen to drastically decrease to 18%, the lowest ever in the history of the planet. Now, should the oxygen levels drop below 10%, people will start suffocating and surely die. Notwithstanding the gloomy possibilities, there is still a chance of survival. Project Gemini, developed by Dr. Stephen Ross, has emerged to save planet Earth. The project is about an archaeological find discovered three years ago by paleontologists. The objects they found are believed to be four billion years old. Stephen and his team observed the objects carefully and created copies of it to make them travel to space. Stephen believes life on Earth was created by the objects he found, so he intends to create a suitable environment on another planet with the copies he made in a sphere form. This is so that the humans on Earth can have a better place to live. On the day of their departure, Stephen's wife, Amy tries to stop him from leaving, but she doesn't arrive on time and watches as the ship leaves. As they travel to Earth 2.0, several hundred light years from Earth, the sphere shows some patches and disappears later on without anyone noticing. Something is about to happen. Peter and Stephen inspect the sphere to see if things are in line. After a successful check, they initiate the jump. It doesn't go as smooth as they thought it would, but they all come out alive. After the jump, they appear on an unknown planet instead of Tess. One of the men checks the star maps to be sure, and he confirms the planet they are on isn't Tess. Stephen blames Peter for not putting in the right coordinates and checking the ship's system before they made the jump. Peter explains to him he did all the inspections, but he shuts him up and relieves him from his duties indefinitely. Later, Stephen looks at pictures of his wife and reminisces the love and affection they showed each other. Stephen's wish is to make a new planet for the residents of Earth, which includes his wife. He also recalls the day he launched the sphere for the first time and saw a light in the form of a human. Stephen then asks that they set the jump trajectory to figure out where they are, but unfortunately, they lost all their data and the one remaining also doesn't make any sense. Not even landmarks. Since Stephen laid the blame on Peter for the problems they are encountering now, Peter decides to fix things himself. He turns off all the CCTV cameras and proceeds. Shortly, Stephen and the two other guys get a notification that the repair airlock has been opened and an object is gradually approaching the ship. Minutes after waiting for the object, Peter's lifeless body hits the ship. The team is worried about his death and can't seem to figure out what killed him. David thinks Peter killed himself upon realizing the mistake he made. Leona on the other hand doesn't agree with him. She has known Peter and worked with him for years and he wouldn't do that. Later, David discovers a nearby planet. The surface of the planet is made of volcanic rock. There is no biosphere but an atmosphere without oxygen. Stephen sees the conditions on the planet as perfect for the sphere to launch. Ryan asks Stephen to first examine the planet before they make a move, but he says he makes the decisions. He explains that they haven't got much time for that and rather, they will do that after launching the sphere. They proceed to land on the planet. Stephen goes with the other team members to the planet while Richard stays in the ship to relay feedback to them. The weather condition intensifies. The wind and storm takes control of the lander and starts directing them straight to the ground. Richard suggests doubling the thrust to slow down their fall and that will burn all their fuel. Since it's their only chance of survival, Richard slows them down but they still crush hard on the surface of the planet and lose consciousness. Stephen recalls when he gave his wife a bracelet he made out of a fragment in the old sphere. The lander becomes stable and they all regain consciousness. The problem now is that they are now far away from the landing site they set. Stephen tells them it isn't a big deal. He implies that they will find a cave around since they landed in the mountain. There, they will initiate the launch. He finds a cave big enough and suitable for the sphere and they proceed. After taking the sphere out of its position, a slimy substance drops out of the area where it was placed. Back in the ship, Richard finds the same slimy substance on some part of the ship and the camera Peter used in recording himself. Stephen and the team finish with the launch and move back to the lander. Richard then sends Peter's recording to them. While Peter was inspecting the engine, something jumped out of it and killed him. Now, they know he didn't kill himself. Richard watched all the recordings and found out that the Trojan showed up right after they left Earth and it crawled into the sphere before they made the jump. The Trojan is still in the sphere and it has begun to make changes to the program they set. 
Steven orders the team to go back to the sphere and reset the program, but Brian stops him and asks Richard to play the footage of Steve examining the sphere for the first time. That human form he saw could be the cause of all that is happening, and the sphere might also be an incubator for those creatures. Ryan becomes the new leader. Later, Stephen confronts David about the Trojan which is present in the sphere and convinces him to go with him and reprogram it. David follows him and when they get there, they see that everything is changing. The sphere is now creating an alien life form. David checks on his tablet and sees that the Trojan is coming their direction. Stephen still wants to continue with the reprogramming though the Trojan is drawing near. David begins to shoot the sphere when Stephen resists and he points the gun at him in return. Just then they notice the Trojan is almost at the entrance. Quickly, Stephen grabs a fragment of the sphere and they hide until the Trojan gets inside the cave. The Trojan senses and runs after them as they leave, but they get into the lander fast enough and close the airlock. Ryan finds them and lashes at them for going against his rules. Suddenly, the lander begins to malfunction. Leona leaves her bank and on her way. She sees the slimy substance. Frank pulls her away from the passageway into a corner. He informs her that the Trojan has made a hole in the lander and got into it. The Trojan appears and kills Frank. Leona flees the strange figure and warns the team about it. The Trojan has destroyed all the cameras and most components of the lander. As a result, they won't be able to get the feed from Richard. The life support system still works and Steven volunteers to connect the cameras to the backup. Steven cautiously walks his way to the life support and restores the power and communication connections. They then plan on how to drive the Trojan out of the lander. Steven waits outside the lander in order to catch the attention of the Trojan. Leona opens the door and quickly shuts herself in a room to hide from the Trojan. In no time, the Trojan finds Steven and starts pursuing him. Leona comes out and shoots at the Trojan to buy Steven some time to get back inside. The fire is let out to kill the Trojan, but it kills Leona instead. David quickly helps back inside. The Trojan still gets part of its body into the ladder and it attacks David's arm before they close the door. Leaving part of the body in the lander, Stephen closes the airlock and they seal the hole the Trojan created to get inside. Stephen then recalls when his wife told him not to go on the mission because she is pregnant and she wants the both of them to work together and develop a vaccine for the virus. After a while, Stephen examines the Trojan's body and finds out that the Trojan infected David with a bacteria denoting that his blood holds the key to the life-threatening virus on Earth. Stephen then cuts the Trojan's body and suddenly, the light in the lab begins to quiver. The exact light form he saw when examining the sphere for the first time shows up again. There, he catches the glimpse of the whole situation they are in now. The Trojan is a transponder. Stephen proposes that they destroy the Trojan and then restore the settings in the sphere, but Ryan locks him up in the lab together with David, explaining that he keeps putting their lives in danger. David agrees with Ryan, saying he never cared about anyone's life and he just wants to play the hero. Straight away, Stephen remembers his wife again. Even after going through her proposal to produce the vaccine and seeing that it's promising, he still decides to embark on his light years journey. Amy tells him he has no care for anyone as he says. He just wants to be hailed as a savior. She then takes off the bracelet and throws it away. Stephen makes contact with Richard and with his help. He finds out that they didn't move in space, but instead in time. They are on Earth, before the beginning of life itself, and it is evident that the same fragment he shaped into a bracelet for Amy is what he found in the sphere. The sphere with them now and the one on Earth are the same, but in different times. Stephen quickly writes a message on the bracelet showing Amy how to connect the spheres. He believes Amy will miss him and she will go looking for the bracelet. In the present time, Amy visits Stephen's lab and sees the news that Stephen and his team failed the mission. Back on the ship, Ryan brings out explosives to blow up the sphere. Richard tries connecting Stephen to him, but he has switched off his radio. With the help of Richard, Stephen goes to Ryan and explains how they can kill the Trojan. Suddenly, David comes out of the lab and kills Ryan. He points the gun at Stephen to kill him too, but he hides. The bacteria is taking over his mind. Several minutes later, Stephen distracts David and shoots him, but he doesn't die. Stephen goes outside to get the Trojan's attention. He runs back inside and locks it up in the control room. The Trojan breaks the door and finds Stephen, but he manages to get out of the Trojan's sight. David finds him, and just as he is about to shoot him, the Trojan pounces on him. Stephen quickly activates the bomb and runs out of the ship with 25 seconds remaining. The ship then explodes and leaves Stephen unconscious. He wakes up after some time and realizes his oxygen tank has been pierced and he has about an hour to live. 
Richard proposes that he picks him up, but he says he needs to go back to the cave to contact Amy. Stephen makes his way out of the storm into the cave. He then launches the sphere with the fragment to contact Amy. In the present time, Amy finds the bracelet she threw away with the inscription Stephen made on it. She rushes back into the lab and uses the information to activate the sphere. Stephen appears in front of her, but in a hologram. He tells her the formula for the vaccines and expresses his love for her and their unborn child before vanishing. Stephen then dies in the cave. At the end of the movie, Amy produces the formula for the vaccine bringing back the beauty on Earth. She is also seen caring for her baby.